Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This time we are going to automate Notion databases. To be precise, we are going to build three very simple workflows. The first one is Stock Portfolio Tracker, which will automatically update stock prices every single day. The second one is OCR Assistant, which will extract the data from PDF invoices. The fields like invoice number, customer name or invoice date will update automatically every single time you update new invoice to your Notion database. And the third automation is social image generator. I want to create unified images for my social media profiles. In this case, those are going to be meetup images. So I provide data such as keynote topic, name of the person that is going to run the presentation and so on. And according to this data, I want to generate images that I can attach to my social media posts. Of course, all those workflows we are going to build with my favorite automation tool, which is NA10. If you have never used NA10 before, I highly encourage you to try CloudPlan. That is very easy to set up and will take you less than three minutes to create an account. In the description, you can find the link to NA10 Cloud and also special coupon code. And right now, let's go straight to the tutorial. The very first step is to add Notion credentials to NA10. In the drop-down settings of your workspace, you need to go to section connections and click manage connections. Then you need to click develop or manage integrations and you need to create new app. Here you need to enter name of your integration, which in my case is NA10, and you can also upload the logo image. When everything is fine, you can simply click submit. Then you should see a field with your API token. You need to copy it and go to tab credentials in NA10 and simply add new credential. Then you need to search for Notion API in credentials library. When you find it, simply click continue. I will also slightly change the name of my credential and you can paste your API token in field API key. When everything is fine, you can click save and you should see a green box that confirms that connection is correct. Right now we need to also turn on the connection in Notion. So as you can see, all three databases are under the page Notion Automations. So when I turn on the connection for the page Notion Automations, all child element, so all three databases have the connection turned on. So when I go right now, for example, to Stock Portfolio Tracker and click the drop down settings, I should see that connection with NA10 should be active. Right now, when credentials are set, we can go to the first project, which is Stock Portfolio Tracker. Here I have the five example tickers and I want to update this database every single day with the current price of those stocks. Because I have the specific column for quantity of stocks in my portfolio, the value will update automatically. I will use Alpha Vantage API to get current stock prices for my automation. You can get free API key by filling the form on Alpha Vantage website. Please note that with free API key, you are able to make five requests per minute and max 100 calls per day. If you want to use Alpha Vantage API more intensively, it's recommended to buy one of the premium plans. Right now, I need to find an endpoint in API documentation to get current stock price for the specific stock ticker. And I will use quote endpoint, which should return the very basic data about stock ticker. After sending a request to this endpoint, I should receive in response the latest price of the stock and of course information about volume and last trading day. Using this endpoint is actually very easy and all you need to do is to provide in URL parameters ticker of your stock and API key. And this is something that we are going to do right now in NA10. In the very first node of the workflow, I want to return all the tickers that I have in my database. So I of course use resource data page and as an operation I use get many. And I want to return all records from this database. After executing the node, I should see all records that I have in my stock portfolio tracker, including the IDs of the rows, which are very important in the next steps of this workflow. In the following node, I want to split the items into batches of one because I want to check the price and update the Notion database for each ticker separately. Because free Alpha Vantage API key provides only five requests per minute, I need to use wait node and use interval of 12 seconds between the calls to avoid errors in my workflow. 
After that comes the crucial part, which is call to Alpha Vantage API. And for this purpose, I use HTTP request node and I use the endpoint that I mentioned before. As a symbol parameter in this URL, I point to the ticker property from my Notion database. And as an API key, I simply paste the API key that I have from Alpha Vantage. As a method in this HTTP request node, I use of course get. And after executing this node, I should receive in the output basic data about the stock that I wanted to have. And among others, I have of course the price of the stock and the latest trading day. What I need to do right now is simply update the Notion database with those details. And for this purpose, I use Notion node in NA10. First, I need to enter the ID of the record that I want to update. And this one I take from the very first node from this workflow, which is get tickers. Next, I need to map the output from HTTP request node with the specific columns in Notion database. And those are of course column price and price date. When this is ready, I can simply close this window and the only thing that is left right now is loop of this sequence. So I connect the last Notion node with the split in batches node again. Then I save the workflow and I can run the test execution. Normally it would take much longer, but I speed up this clip for the purpose of this tutorial. And after the execution of this workflow, you should see the updated prices and dates in your Notion database. If you want to run this workflow on a regular basis, the only thing that you need to do is simply replace the manual execution node with scheduled trigger. And I've set this trigger for execution every day at midnight. Then I simply delete the execution node and connect the scheduled trigger with the rest of the workflow. Then I save the workflow and I can activate it. Let's move right now to the next automation, which is Invoice OCR Assistant. I've prepared three invoices, which have the very same layout, but different information. We want to extract the data such as invoice number, name of the recipient of the invoice or due date directly to the Notion database. As you can see, those example documents have different numbers because those are one, two and three. They have also different names and balance due amounts. Let's see right now how we can extract those information and put directly to Notion. This time I'm going to use Mindy, which is the API for extracting data from different types of documents, such as invoices, passports and many, many others. After setting up the account, I've already activated the invoice API. And the first thing I need to do actually is simply generate the API key to use it in NA10. So I name my API key general and I copy it. Then I go to NA10 and in top credentials, I simply click add credential. In the library of credentials, I search for Mindy invoice API and click continue. I also like always rename my API credentials and paste the API key that I have just copied from Mindy dashboard. Then I click save and I can close this window. With Mindy, you are able to extract data from over 200 pages per month totally for free. And anytime you want to extend this limit, you can use pay as you go plan and simply pay for every new page. Let's see right now how we can connect it all together in NA10. So first I need to, of course, return all records from my database. So for this purpose, I use the same node as in previous example. So this is the Notion node. And in output, I should have the URL of the file, which is the PDF invoice. Next, I want to filter out all records that don't have PDF file attached or already have been processed. So I simply don't want them to run again through this workflow. In this case, when I run this node, it should keep all three records from the database because they have attached PDF file but have not been processed yet. In the next node, I want to simply download the file, which is the PDF invoice. So when I click execute node, I should have three PDF files in my output. Next, I want to run the data extraction. And for this purpose, I use, of course, Mindy node in NA10. I run this node for all three items together. And as you can see in the output section, I already have extracted data from those PDF files. And finally, I need to update the Notion database. So for this purpose, I use again Notion node in NA10. As I executed, you can see that I received information that all three rows have been updated. 
To run this node properly, I of course had to do some mapping before, and the very specific keys from min the output are with parameters in NHN redirected to the very specific columns in Notion database. In a result, when I go to the Notion app, I can see that all columns are filled with the correct data extracted from the PDF files attached to the records. In order not to run this workflow every time manually, I've also changed the trigger to Notion trigger. And this time the workflow will check every minute if the any of the rows in the Notion database has been changed. Since the Notion trigger node in this workflow returns slightly different data structure as in previous example, I need to also map the correct keys in other nodes. So for example, the URL of the PDF file has a different key name as in the previous workflow. The other functionalities of the workflow are exactly the same as in previous example. So basically the records are filtered out, the PDF is downloaded, then the data is extracted and the Notion database is updated. And let's go finally to the last example of the automation. I want to generate social media images for an event. And I provide the data such as topic of the presentation, the name of the person that is going to run the presentation and the profile image and I want to generate the very unified images that I can post on my social media profiles. This time I'm going to use render form API which provides 50 free credits and the functionality is pretty simple. You create a template in render form and receive the data structure that then you can play with and add your own parameters. And finally when you do an API request you receive the generated image that you can post on social media. I use free version of RenderForm, but you, if you want, you can use RenderForm Pro or pay as you go plan. Let's start with adding credentials to NA10. I go to my profile settings and in tab API keys, I copy the API token. Then I go to NA10 and I click add credentials and I search for header authentication. Then I click continue and as always, I rename my credentials. Next in the field name, I need to enter X API key and in the field value, I need to paste the API token copied from the render form dashboard. When I do this, I can click save and let's go back right now quickly to render form again. I've prepared a simple image template and actually all those fields can be controlled with API requests. When I click in the dashboard button preview, I can go to template details and have a quick look on it, but the most important is the top live preview. Here I can see how dynamically will change my image when I edit the specific fields. As an example, I will change the value of presenter title field to automation specialist. And as you can see in the live preview, this value has been changed also on the image. Finally, let's go to the documentation. Here I can find the render endpoint, which I will use to generate the images using my template. And I will of course edit the sample request according to my needs. Workflow this time will have the very similar structure to the previous example. So first I need to of course get all records from the Notion database. And according to this data, I'm going to run operations in other nodes in this workflow. Just as before, I need to filter out all records that should not be further processed by the workflow. So I want to discard all records that have already image attached to the database page or have incomplete data. In this case, when I run this node, all records should pass the test because all fields have been filled properly, but the social image is not generated yet. So next I need to create those images. And for this purpose, I use of course the render endpoint and header authentication credentials that we have entered before. In JSON body, I need to specify of course template name and the values of the parameters that I want to change on the image. And finally, I want to update rows in Notion database. And for this purpose, I use just as in the previous example, the Notion node in NA10. This time I want to update only one column, which is named social. And as a file URL, I want to pass the parameter of the URL returned by the previous node. Let me right now execute the workflow and let's see what happens. As I execute the workflow, you can see that all three items, so three records from the database have been passed further in the workflow. And one by one, the records in Notion database are updated with the very customized social media images. As we click through those files, we can see that each image includes the very customized presentation topic, name of the speaker, profile picture, and of course, position. 
in a current form, we can use this automation manually. So we can run it every time we have a, such a need. But we can use also the very same Notion trigger just as in the previous example. With the Notion trigger, the workflow will check every minute for updates in the Notion database and return only the updated records. Just as before, the data structure provided by this node is slightly different, so we need to update other nodes in this workflow, including the filter node. Since I have already generated the social media images for all records in my Notion database, when I execute the filter node, I should see that the one record that has been returned by the Notion trigger has been discarded. So for each new record that meets the requirements of the filter node, the social media image with render form will be generated and attached to the record in the Notion database. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and to my newsletter, link in the description and see you in the next video. Bye.